restart of the novel for me. I realized it would be described through the place, through Skelec Lake, and with this problem that Irene has of 30 years of a marriage feeling like nothing now. Um, so I'll read just the um, first like two pages, but then I'll read this part of the scene that I just talked about, because that was actually the genesis of the book. That's what I first wrote, something that comes late in the book, that scene of uh, Irene imagining the winter walking out across the ice. Um, but I'll read the, the other two pages, because the first two pages actually are how, is how the book starts. It tells you what the story is, and such. people tend to like to know that. Um, my mother was not real. This is Irene, the 55-year-old woman, speaking to her daughter, Rhoda, who's 30. Uh, Irene talking about her mother. My mother was not real. She was an early dream, a hope. She was a place, snowy like here and cold, a wooden house on a hill above a river, an overcast day, the old white paint of the buildings made brighter somehow by the trapped light, and I was coming home from school, ten years old, walking by myself, walking through dirty patches of snow in the yard, walking up to the narrow porch. I can't remember how my thoughts went then. I can't remember who I was or what I felt like. All that is gone, erased. I opened our front door and found my mother hanging from the rafters. I'm sorry, I said, and I stepped back and closed the door. I was outside on the porch again. You said that, Rhoda asked? You said you were sorry? Yes. Oh, well, Mom. It was long ago, Irene said, and it was something I couldn't see even at the time, so I can't see it now. I don't know what she looked like hanging there. I don't remember any of it, only that it was. Rhoda scooted closer on the couch and put her arm around her mother, pulled her close. They both looked at the fire. A metal screen in front, small hexagons, and the longer Rhoda looked, the more these hexagons seemed like the back wall of the fireplace, made golden by flame, as if the back wall, black with soot, could be revealed or transmuted by fire. Then her eyes would shift, and it would be only a screen again. I wish I had known her, Rhoda said. Me too, Irene said. She patted Rhoda's knee. I need to get to sleep. Busy day tomorrow. I'll miss this place. It was a good home, but your father wants to leave me, and the first step is to make us move out to that island to make it seem he gave it a try. That's not true, Mom. We all have rules, Rhoda, and your father's main rule is that he can never seem like the bad guy. He loves you, Mom. Irene stood and hugged her daughter. Good night, Rhoda. In the morning, Irene carried her end of log after log from the truck to the boat. These are never going to fit together, she said to her husband, Gary. I'll have to plane them down a bit, he said, tight-lipped. Irene laughed. Thanks, Gary said. He already had that grim, worried look that accompanied all his impossible projects. Why not build a cabin with boards, Irene asked. Why does it have to be a log cabin? But Gary wasn't answering. Suit yourself, she said. But these aren't even logs. None of them is bigger than six inches. It's going to look like a hovel made out of sticks. They were at the upper campground on Skelac Lake, the water a pale jade green from glacial runoff, flaky from silt, and because of its depth, never warmed much, even in late summer. The wind across it chill and constant, and the mountains rising from its eastern shore still had pockets of snow. From their tops, Irene had often seen, on clear days, the white volcanic peaks of Mount Adel and Mount Ilianma across the Cook Inlet, and in the foreground, the broad pan of the Kenai Peninsula, spongy green and red-purple moss, the stunted trees rooming wetlands and smaller lakes, and the one highway snaking silver in sunlight as a river, mostly public land. Their house and their son Mark's house, the only buildings along the shore of Ski Lake. And I realize, of course, there are no buildings on shore of Ski Lake. I wanted them to be with me. And even they were tucked back into trees, so the lake still could seem prehistoric, wild. But it wasn't enough to be on the shore. They were moving out now to Caribou Island. So, and then I'll read just this little bit uh, at the end, just because this, this was the first part that I actually wrote of the book. 